Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nessa and I am an indie author from Toronto, Canada and I publish under the pen name A and Sage. If you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, yet then you should know that I publish weekly videos and I talk about my journey as an indie author, things that I have learned along the ways of my career. Um, I have currently published 15 books and so there's quite a a lot of mistakes that I made that I'd like for you to avoid making and I have a lot of tips that I've picked up some advice that I have and just for you to see some behind the scenes of what it takes to be an indie author in today's book landscape. I also share a lot of planner and stationary videos because I do love those also very much as I'm sure a lot of writers do. So with that said today we are in another episode of Sage Advice if you're not familiar with what Sage Advice is, it is a kind of an ongoing series where I pick and choose some of the big mistakes, some small mistakes that I made um, and I make videos about them to kind of share you the trouble of making them. And so it's an embarrassment series for me um, and hopefully one that is knowledgeable for you and helpful on your writing journey. And in today's episode of Sage Advice, we are actually talking about budgeting for authors. Budgeting for authors can be a very scary, um, kind of fear-filled, um, anxiety-ridden um, topic to discuss. It is for me a lot of times when I think about budgeting as an author um, and when I started out when I was thinking about budgeting, when I didn't have a budget at all, it was always very... Um, a lot of pressure and it was there i was very anxious to think about like how to budget what to budget when i haven't sold anything yet um, and kind of how to figure out and tiptoe through this landscape um, of business budgeting when you're an author especially when you work for yourself because you will need to budget um, things will come up um, you can get some things for free not everything is right so when you're starting out you're getting more things for free but as you start to grow um, you're gonna hopefully be getting an income, your books will be selling, you'll be getting royalties, you might have other things that you're doing that bring in an income. Um, and so budgeting that income and budgeting your business is a very important aspect of being an author. It's not just, unfortunately, writing and creative, which, you know, that is the fun part, but there are things that happen behind the scenes. And so I thought we could dedicate this episode of Sage Advice to budgeting with the new year starting out. I think it's important to start it on the right track. And so let's talk moolah. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of uh, tips kind of that I have for you on this topic and I'll sprinkle in all the things that I did wrong as I talk about them. Um, so the first one, and this is a pretty big one and it doesn't even matter if you haven't made any money off your books yet if you haven't even published yet but create a financial plan create a financial plan for your year for your quarter and for your month so if you have a small budget starting out let's say you know that you kind of you have 20 bucks extra every month right and that's what we'll pick a small like amount and that's what you have to start with you have saved out 20 dollars every month you can part with to put in towards your author career so how are you going to budget that 20 dollars every month so you calculate like what you're going to do with it monthly what you're going to do with the collection of the three months quarterly and what you can do with it yearly and you want to create a plan that hits your main um, accomplishment. So you want to make sure that you're budgeting for things that are giving you a ROI, so a return on your investment. So you want to make sure that that money, whether you have a lot of it or a little of it, that in your financial plan, it is going towards things that are actually bringing you money back. So you're not just throwing money out there. Um, when I first started, I did not have a financial plan. I basically um, kind of paid for my author career. Well, not paid for it, but I bootstrapped a lot of it. Uh, but this, like I did a lot of stuff on my own. Um, I was lucky enough that I had a design background, so I didn't have to pay for a cover artist. Um, I did pay for an editor. Um, my big mistake was that I right away with my first book spent thousands of dollars on an editor. Went out there, I found like the best editor I could find, all these recommendations. But unfortunately, um, they were great. The editor was amazing. My book was not, it was my first book. Um, and so I threw a lot of money um, into, and I, it made the book way better, of course, a hundred percent, but I kind of wish I spent that money on later books um, or maybe just budgeted the editing a little bit better. Maybe I could have found somebody 
that wasn't quite so top tier. There's a lot of editors out there. Um, there's some questionable ones, so just be careful so you don't get scammed. Um, there's people who say they're editors, they might not be editors. It's, it's just like everywhere else, right? So just be careful who you pick, but pick someone within your budget. And so if you want, um, let's say if you do have $20 every month and you have one book um, coming out in a year, maybe you take that $20 every month that you have budgeted it, save it up for a year, and your editor is going to be like you find an editor that's affordable within that budget and that's the how you spend it right and so your monthly plan will be just to save the twenty dollars your quarterly plan will be just to save the twenty dollars and your yearly plan will be to take that money and pay your editor and hopefully that will have a return on your investment and i mean good editing is always a return on your investment because readers will like books that are well edited um they just you know gravitate towards them you might save yourself from some bad reviews but again there's different ways to do this i'm not one to tell somebody to go pay for something that they can't afford um, there's other ways that you can get edits for sure um, this is just like in my own personal opinion that if i'm spending money on anything um, i'm definitely spending on money on editing and i'm definitely spending money on cover design if i don't know how to do that myself those would be my two main things um, because everything else i can kind of teach myself however you might have a different mentality right like you might actually like me, for example, you could design your own cover, or maybe you are a professional editor or something like that. And so while professional editors who write still get other editors to look at their books, maybe that's somewhere you can save money. Um, but you might not be someone who can teach themselves marketing, for example, or ads, or writing blurbs or copy or something, something like that, or copy that sells. So maybe that's where your budget will go. So just create a financial plan for yourself and figure out what that financial plan will be. Um, another really big tip um, that I didn't do at the beginning was to have a separate business account. Very, very important. Um, you can get free accounts like bank accounts where you don't pay yearly. Just take a look at what's out there. There's some, I mean, I don't know how it works everywhere in the world, but here where we are, um, we have banks that offer online only accounts. So if you do only online business, it's actually like the monthly fee is like four dollars or something like that it's very low um so depending on where you are just take a look at your different options um, or at least open a second personal account or something like that just have your account for your finances separate for your business than for yourself and this will save you so much trouble in the future because when I first started, I was spending obviously my own money for my own personal accounts, my own personal credit cards and all that. I didn't have business accounts. I didn't have business credit cards. And so when it came time to kind of the end of the year, like tax information, um, like expenses and all of that, I would have to kind of go through line by line of my personal spendings too and just separate what's business, what's not. And obviously you do that as you go along as well. Um, side hidden little tip over there make sure that you do your um regular um expenses and all that stuff do it on a regular basis don't leave it all to the last minute because you're it's hell if you do that it's going to be a lot to get through uh, but having that separate business account it's not just easier for your accountant it's easier for you at the end of the year to figure out like what the business is making what you're spending on the business for what it's making it's not just such a headache right and it's not mixed in, inside your personal life and your personal spending as well. Um, then another thing you might want to think about is to use accounting tools. They are an expense. Um, I will say I use QuickBooks. I absolutely love it. My accountant recommended it. And I used to do everything in spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets, Google Sheets, whatever. And for me, QuickBooks saved the day. There's different ones. You can do your research, figure out just QuickBooks work for me. I can um, add all of my accounts to it. I even add my personal accounts to it. Um, and then whatever transaction goes out, I can delegate whether it's business or personal right away, same day, as soon as it happens. I can add, attach receipts, I can categorize everything, and then my accountant will have access to it at the end of the year and use that. Um, so that's great. You also want to check with an accountant. If you're going to do your own taxes, just at least double check with someone that knows what they're doing. Um, if you're not um, an accountant yourself, but double check on taxes. Um, you don't want to make mistakes on taxes, obviously, um, because they're costly and not legal sometimes. So just like make sure that you are doing everything correctly in the tax world. Um, and that's why accounting tools kind of make sense for me too, because everything is just there. Um, it's like a fool's way of doing taxes, which I don't know that much about. So I do count on other people and platforms and programs to help me. Um, you also want to think about having some monthly check-ins, some budgeting check-ins with yourself. 
Um, if you're the only person in the business, which you probably will be when you start, but just have budgeting check-ins with yourself. I have a monthly budgeting meeting or so called where I go through all of my expenses. I make sure everything is checked off. Everything is correct. I make sure all my receipts are categorized. Um, I check all my sales, all my royalties from all the different streams of revenue that I have coming in. Um, and I kind of balance that out. So I take a look and I see what did I spend and what did I make? Um, and kind of figure that out. Um, so check in with yourself monthly because every month will differ when you work for yourself. Um, unfortunately, we don't, as entrepreneurs, we don't get a steady paycheck, which, you know, has so many pros to being an entrepreneur, but not having a steady check paycheck might be a con for a lot of people. Um, it sometimes is for me as well, because you don't know how every month is going to look, but that's why it's important to have these monthly check-ins with yourself for budgeting, to make sure that you are not overspending, that you're not spending money, that your business doesn't make, and things like that. Um, the way that I like to set up my budgets to um, figure out what works for you. But for me, what works is to have the necessary, the nice to have, and the dream. Um, and those are my kind of three budgeting buckets, right? And so if I'm thinking of something that I might want to do that will cost my business and myself money, um, I see which bucket it falls to, right? Um, and then from there, I make a decision on whether or not it can happen this month based on my last month check-in to see if I have extra cash to spend um, and what can happen there. So for me, things that are necessary um, are obviously as we mentioned, editing, not cover design, because I do that myself, uh, but any kind of production costs so the books can go out. All of my subscription-based services that I use, like um, if I use um, scheduling tools, like I use Buffer for scheduling, QuickBooks, accounting tools, um, things like that. So all of my subscriptions, those are necessary to run the business. So they go on the necessary pile. Um, and then a lot of times if I'm gearing up for a release, um, advertising uh, is a necessary expense for me. Um, but that's only when there's a release on the book front. On the cover design business front, it is a necessary every single month because I do have ongoing ads for the cover design business monthly. Um, and my nice to haves are things like if I have a book coming out, swag, um, artist illustrations, right? Um, something like a twerk, for example, like right now with the things that River Heights, with that coming out, I have quite a few tours going on. Um, I have hired artists to do illustrations. I am making swag. So this was a nice to have for me. And the only reason I got to have it is because I went through my budgeting and I made sure that I can budget for certain things. And then in the dream section, um, it could be things like, um, I don't know, like shirts or something, t-shirts, which is still swag, but like a bigger swag, right? Um, or a dream could be like some kind of like themed party. I mean, online now and stuff, uh, but we're just give stuff away, like constantly, like things like that. Like those would be the dreams, the big things that cost a lot of money. Um, and that's in the dream pile. So just, I'm just brainstorming here and throwing stuff out, but something like that. So you kind of want to have these buckets and every month as you check in, take a look at your buckets and see what you can bring where, right? Like what you can cover from what. So the necessary always has to get covered because that's what you need to run your business successfully. Um, and then the nice to have is kind of like what's left over. And the dream could be like a quarterly budget or a yearly budget to see what was left over. Maybe you could have the dream for next year or something like that. And then as you go through these and you have your monthly budgets um, and you go through your necessary nice to haves and your dreams, Pay yourself a salary. Start paying yourself a salary from the beginning if you can. Um, don't just take your royalties. I mean, you might at the beginning. I did. This was a mistake that I made actually at the beginning. Everything that my books made, um, I kind of like paid that to myself. Well, like I kept it, right? Like I didn't pay it to myself. Went into my account and I just spent it. Um, I did not think about having a salary. And that's fine. Because your salary might be like so minimal, right? Like unless you're making uh, like until not unless until you're making um, a full time income, your salary could be like five dollars, right? Like you don't know how many royalties you're going to have starting out. I had very little when I first started. It took time to grow um, and I didn't have multiple streams of revenue. Um, so I, I didn't think about paying myself a salary. 
I wish I did because the budgeting would have been so much easier. Um, when you pay yourself a salary, the way that I do it now is I go uh, monthly at this time um, and I go through it and I see what I have made because again, every month fluctuates. I see what I made. I see what my expenses were and whatever's left over minus what you have to put away for taxes could technically be my salary. I, however, also have worked in um, like a percentage that I put away that is just for the business um, and that's a savings for the business, right? So that's building towards that dream bucket, towards that nice to have bucket and things like that. But whatever's left over after everything is taken out, that's what my salary is. And I have worked it out on average um, where I can pay myself a weekly salary, which makes more sense just kind of for our household and how I run things in my business. Um, for me, it's easier to do a smaller weekly salary because every week fluctuates for me um, than it is to do like a bi-weekly or a monthly, but it's gonna be different for everybody. So just make sure that you have some kind of salary built in there for yourself. And then you also wanna expenses. I, guess, I don't even know how to, <laughs> it's such a, <laughs> I hate tracking expenses, but you have to track your expenses. It is so important to track your expenses. If you don't, you will not know how much money you're bleeding and losing from your business and from yourself until it's too late. I, uh, when I first started, I just went wild, right? I was like, oh my God, I got like a bonus at work when I still had a different job that when this wasn't my job, I'm going to just spend that on my books. I'm going to get all this cool stuff. I'm going to have like a million hard copies sent to my house. Like, and who knows where I'm going to sort them. Doesn't matter. I'm so excited, right? I didn't track any of that. And when I sat down to track it, um, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> it was such a, a reality check. I felt like my face hit a wall. Like I was like in one of those like old like Bugs Bunny cartoons or something where I just like run into a wall face first and my eyes bulge out and I just like pass out and little birds circle me. It was such a reality check that I did not spend anything on my business or my books for a very long time after that. And that hurt my business a lot. And it hurt my authorship a lot. So track your expenses right away. Um, track them every day, uh, everything you spend. Every week, sit down and take a look at them. Every month, do your check-ins and take a look at your expenses and make sure you know what you're spending on your business and why. Make sure you can justify it and make sure it's important to your business that you spend this money. Don't just spend money because you see other people spending money on this. It might not be necessary for you. Um, what other people are doing, that's on them, right? Like people might be making like seven figures of their books, but they might be spending a lot in advertising. You don't know what's happening with anybody in the back end. So just save yourself the headache. Don't compare, do what works for you and track your expenses. And then my final thing is, as you have seen, I set goals. So I'll post um, my goal video, my goal setting video somewhere up here, but I set quarterly goals and then expand to yearly goals that also narrow down to daily and weekly and monthly goals. Um, but I set goals for myself and I set budgeting goals for myself. So I make sure that I know what it is that I want to make. Um, I sit down at the beginning of the year and I kind of think of a number and I think this number will make me very comfortable and I would like to make this number. And then I think of the ways in which I can make this number. And when I do the math, if it doesn't add up, then that tells me that my number is not yet realistic. Like what I want to make is not necessarily what I can make based on last year's reports, right? So set realistic budgeting goals, smart budgeting goals for yourself. See what you can make, figure out how you can make it, and then maybe add 5%. You're just gonna give yourself something to strive for. So those are my budgeting tips for you today. I know it's, uh, I mean, it's scary to think about budgeting. It's scary to talk about money, but it is important, especially when you're working for yourself. So you wanna think about it. Um, you wanna kind of start writing things down and you wanna start doing it earlier. Do it earlier than I did, <laughs> please. <laughs> please do it better than me. Um, don't wait until the last minute. Don't wait until it's too late and you're already kind of in a loop um, that you have to backtrack through just start right away it's almost easier when there's less income coming in 
when you have less books, when you have less um, different streams of revenue, it is so much easier to start thinking about the budgeting at the beginning before you delve right into it than it is later on. Um, and it's always really good, even if you are already further in your career, it's always nice to think of just different ways that you can work your budget, that you can think about budget. And it's good to have a mentality where budgeting is not scary. We don't have to be scared of budgeting. We're making this in as a business. This is our living. This is our livelihood. We love it and it makes us happy to wake up every morning. And so budgeting for it, it's not a scary thing. It's not a negative thing. It's just a necessary part of this life that we have created for ourselves or want to create for ourselves. So I hope you guys found these tips helpful and I wish you all the luck in your author journey and in your budgeting for your author journey. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to comment down below and make sure that you like this video and that you have subscribed for more regular videos um, to hear about my author journey and just to get more tips and advice like this. So with that said, I hope you guys stay magical and I will talk to you next week. Bye.